So let's talk protein because protein is an interesting one. Um, because I think most people think of protein, they think it's just one thing. But not all protein is the same. This is a very important concept to understand. Protein is made up of other smaller molecules. So a protein is a large molecule, and it's made up of, of amino acids. You have about 20 amino acids that we need, and amino acids in different combinations make up different proteins. Protein, overall, is important for reactions that our body does, or cellular reactions, DNA replicating, replication, our cellular structure, cellular transport, uh, the way our cells signal and communicate with one another, immune responses. Yeah, I, I'll go through this whole thing just to give you a picture of how important proteins are. You know, it synthesizes neurotransmitters and hormones, muscle growth, muscle maintenance, recovery, mineral absorption. It's, the list goes on. I mean, they are what makes up your body, essentially. Um, but when you eat protein, it's not, protein is not equal. So there are different amino acids, 20, that your body needs for proper growth and function. And in different combinations, these amino acids make up protein. Nine out of these 20 are classified as essential. And what that means is that your body cannot make these. Your body has to, has to get these nine amino acids through your diet and your diet only. I'll name them real quickly. I don't remember them off the top of my head, and you probably won't either, but it's just good to be familiar with how they sound like. Phenylalanine, valine, threonine, tryptophan, methionine, leucine, isoleucine, lysine, histidine. Those are the nine that our body needs. And if you have a deficiency in these essential acids, amino acids, they can negatively impact your body including your nervous system, reproductive system, immune system, digestive system, because they essentially provide so many different functions to your body. So foods that contain all of these essential amino acids are referred to as complete proteins. And complete proteins are mainly meat, seafood, poultry, eggs, and dairy. Those are your main sources of complete proteins, meaning that they're giving you all those important amino acids that you need to survive. There are some plant sources that are considered complete proteins. That include soy, quinoa, buckwheat, or amaranth. Just a few I've researched, and I'm sure there are more. It is important to keep in mind that all protein is not equal. All foods are not equal when it comes to protein. You want to make sure that you're taking in all the important amino acids and you're getting those complete proteins. So something to consider. Recommended daily amount, um, you know, 56 to 91 grams per day for the average male, 46 to 75 grams for the average female. Again, we're all different. It's going to depend on our age, activity level, muscle mass, and other factors. And to repeat, animal proteins typically provide all the essential amino acids in the right ratio that your body needs. Um, so when you're eating animal proteins, you don't necessarily have to worry about if you're getting in all the amino acids. Um, you know, plant a plant-based diet can. And, and again, for some people may be able to digest and obtain all the important amino acids. But you may have to be a you may have to eat a, a wide variety of different plant-based foods to to get all of your essential amino acids. So it, it will probably take some more work and effort, but it seems like it's certainly doable. All right, so we've covered the macronutrients in both how they help your body with calories and how they give your body the important nutrients and building blocks your body needs to maintain and optimize its health. Let's talk quickly about the micronutrients, the vitamins, the minerals. We hear a lot about vitamins, a lot about minerals, typically in supplement form, but foods are a very important source, probably the most important source of your micronutrients. Because food, particularly whole food, provide uh, a diverse array of vitamins and minerals that, that most likely interact with one another and ma macronutrients to help your body digest and use them efficiently. So vitamins are defined as essential nutrients that are required for various vital bodily functions, such as cellular growth, hormonal function, metabolism regulation, 
immune function, enzymatic function, antioxidants, and much more. We have estimated daily amounts that we should or should not be getting, and they will likely change uh, during whatever age we are in life and maybe a disease state or health state that we're going through. So it's very complex. It's very hard to know exactly the amount of vitamins that we should be taking in when, you know, what the best source is. Uh, I would say the, this, the best, safest way to, to do it is make sure you're eating whole foods because you're getting that diverse source of all different types of nutrients. So minerals. Mineral is another type of micronutrient. These are the chemical elements, sodium, potassium, you often hear uh, magnesium, phosphorus. So all these chemical elements that are, they're essential nutrients to, our, to, to us. They, they, they are vital. If we don't have them, we will die. We cannot function. Uh, they serve structural and functional roles, right? When we hear electrolytes, electrolytes mean minerals, sodium, potassium. You want to focus on eating a very diverse diet, making sure you're taking in all the important minerals. And you just don't get them just from eating um, you know, food. You also get them from the water that you drink as well. All right. So before I end this, I think quickly it's uh, important just to touch on processed foods and food additives. Um, you know, Processed foods, like I talked about in the simplex, the, those simple carbohydrates, foods are stripped of most of their nutrients and they give you that that sugar that we crave, that we that we go after, makes a good food product, um, but you know you miss out on a lot of diverse nutrients. So processed foods are essentially commercially prepared foods that are usually easily portable and have a long shelf life and offer other convenient traits. Right, makes for a good business. Uh, not to say there's anything you know it's always wrong, um, but look, they're they're convenient types of foods. Uh, if we need things to last longer or you know, stay for longer. Um, the problem with them, though, there's always a trade-off, is that they usually lack the diversity of nutrients and contain just a minority of nutrients. Right? You usually get a lot of sugar, just a, a, a simple fat, salt, and not much else. You're not getting all those minerals and vitamins and amino acids and different types of fats that you should be getting when you eat whole foods. You're just getting a, a few. Um, and often these processed foods in addition, contain additive ingredients that may or may not be harmful to your health. Um, they contain preservatives, gums, artificial flavorings, colorings. These increase shelf life. They help with the appearance, the flavor, the texture. Right, um, But there's always a trade-off uh, that it may have health consequences. Some of these additives and processed foods have been linked to um, disease. And issues, for example, like artificial colorings and hyperactivity in children, even cancer, uh, nitrates and nit nitrites. You know, you typically find those in like cold cuts, processed meats. Those have been associated with cancer, carrageenan and GI inflammation. Carrageenan is like a gum, like a gummy type substance. Uh, you often find that. You know, I see that you see like chocolate milks or like yogurt, dairy products. Uh, sodium benzoate is a preservative and that has been linked to ADHD and cancer, artificial flavorings and bone marrow, blood cell toxicity. These are just associations that have been found. It's not necessarily saying that this is a hundred percent. And again, things in moderation, maybe not so bad, but if, if your diet is, is just processed foods, you're likely going to encounter, I mean, you are going to encounter health issues for sure. So moderation is always key. All right. So that was a simple breakdown of nutrition 101. I think that everyone should, should understand. And maybe listen to this a couple times. I'll certainly, I'll certainly will come out with uh, a lot more content and podcasts to break these down even further. But this is a great starting point to understand the basics of nutrition to not get caught up in the fad diets, to understand that really all types of nutrients are important and have functions. And we all need them in different amounts because we are different. Some people uh, may be able to maintain a plant-based diet while other people may not be able to. Some people may be able to eat less carbohydrates while some people may need more carbs. Um, 
fats, proteins, it all varies. So there is no good, there is no bad. Um, arm yourself with the fundamental fundamentals, understand nutrition at its core, which is again energy and nutrients. Always remember that. Realize why you're eating. Ask yourself, do I need this? Is this going to give me a diverse amount of nutrients when I eat it? Right. So let's let's just go over some before I get out of here. I'll, I'll go over some a few tips on how to eat a healthy diet for anyone that, that you can start doing right away. So understand that the way you're eating, you're not going to be able to change that overnight. You've created those habits, both physiologically um, and uh, psychologically, and your body is not going to want to change. Right? We, we don't like change. But if you want to change, you've got to take it slow. You can change, but you're going to have to do it over time. So start from where you're at, work slowly from your baseline, your baseline diet. Don't just say, I love that diet that's out in the news. I'm going to start eating that way. You're going to do it and it's going to last, maybe if you're lucky, a month, maybe a couple months, and that's it because you change too fast. So small, small changes over a long period of time. Understand that. When you're decreasing the quantity of your foods, right? If you want to lose weight and maintain a healthier weight, same thing goes for that. Don't don't go above 250 to 500 calories less a day, on average. Um, you know, like I said earlier, it, don't don't go for about two pound weight loss a week. You want to go for maybe half a pound to a pound a week, and that's again around 250 calories to 500 calorie deficit a day. Stay around that; you'll be safe. You know, the lower, the better in the beginning for sure. It, it'll it'll allow your body to adjust appropriately. If you go too big, you're gonna have a huge counter reaction. Your body is going to fight you. It does not want to stop eating. It does not want to lose weight. It does not want to get rid of that extra energy stored. So go slow. When you're working on the improvement of the quality, the nutrients, the food that you're eating, again, take it slow. Maybe replace and find healthier alternatives in like a stepwise fashion. Maybe you're eating a lot of pasta, white pasta, start switching it over occasionally to whole wheat pasta. And then eventually you start decreasing the amount of pasta you're eating. And then if you want you know, to limit it, again, it, it depends on your personal goals, what you're trying to accomplish. But don't just go from eating, let's say you're eating yogurt with a, with a high sugar content, and then you want to start eating healthier yogurt. So now you're eating yogurt with no sugar. Your body is going to be like, ew, this is disgusting. It's not used to eating that. So just step down a little bit. Don't go from zero to 100. Go from a lot of sugar to a little bit less sugar. And then a little bit less. Go like that. Focus on making one to two small changes uh, in your diet per week. That's a good amount of change. Slowly, a few changes. Focus on that and take it week by week. And I would say if there's like a gold standard diet, it's one that's incorporating mostly whole foods, you know, fruits, veggies, beans, uh, animal products that you typically have to cook and prepare or have someone cook for you. And then try to uh, minimize the amount of processed foods that you're eating. That would be the gold standard, but everyone's different. We don't all have the same health goals and abilities. so. You can use that as something maybe to aspire to or uh, something to compare your diet to and then get as close as you can to that, whatever works for you. It's a hard process to change. It's really hard to change it, you know, because of our environment and what we're around and how we've grown up. It is what it is. It's not our fault. It's just, you know, with a lot of luxury and uh, excess you know, which is incredible, we have to now become more responsible and understand how to use all of this great food and abundance of food, but use it responsibly and use it in a healthy manner. So you're going to need some help. I think most people, most people do. It's like anything. It's like wanting to learn a musical instrument and that you're not going to learn how to play the guitar overnight. It's going to take time and you're most likely going to need someone to teach you or something to teach you. Uh, it's the reason why I created Healthy Coach, because I feel that most people need, when starting out, they need a coach to help them 
make and set the right goals, help them do the right things, right? Because you can, you can try to do this on your own, but there are a lot of things you have to consider. The amount of calories you're eating per day, the types of foods. You may not be aware of certain foods. You may not be aware of what's in your food. It's become so complex that you really need an expert professional to help you, but not necessarily stay there and be there with you for your entire life. You just need that initial education, accountability, and motivation as you get to a point where then you then can become independent. So I definitely recommend help um, in that. You know, get yourself an expert coach. Obviously, um, you know, you can find one on your own. There are people out there. Always make sure that they have a qualified background. Um, doesn't have to be expensive too, you know. And uh, I would focus on a sustainable approach. Try to stay away from the one size fits all and things that aren't really personalized. Again, not very sustainable. I recommend, you know, we've got great coaches at Healthy Coach. Uh, they all have backgrounds of dietitians. Uh, and a big reason why we're successful people is because we're personal. We care about those we work with. That's a huge thing. This is not an easy process. It's not easy to go at it alone. And a healthy coach will certainly make your life easier. And it is the best investment that you will ever make. Because without health, you have nothing. And nutrition literally makes up your health. So invest in it now. Whatever, whatever life stage you're at, it's going to benefit you. You know, whether it's a few months, a year or a few years, just get your nutrition right and then you're golden from there. It's the best investment ever because you'll be able to live a healthy, happy life for good. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's not easy. It's not easy and we do need help. Um, but it's important to understand the fundamentals, which is why I, can't, I, I made this podcast so everyone can understand the fundamentals and just, uh, you know, do it the right way. And don't give up. It takes a long time. That'll be it for today. I think I went over enough. Maybe you want to watch this a few times. Um, take notes, whatever. I'll come up with more content, more w ways to break this down in an easier way. But Nutrition 101, understand it. Empower yourself. It's the best thing you can ever do for you and your health. Um, nutrition is what makes you up. So hope you enjoyed I'll be back soon with, a, with another interesting and educational podcast to help you out. I'm Dr. Jesse Aben, and I will see you later.